I've got Peter Ballas with me, who needs no introduction, of course, and uh, Commonwealth Games, World Championships, all sorts of things. Now, of course, part of the New Zealand selection coaching environment you know, for the uh, Commonwealth Games. So, Peter, you're looking forward to it? Oh, I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, the Games are an exciting period. It's probably, well, it is the second most important event that we play in after the World Championships. And so, um, yeah, look, a lot of importance on this event. And uh, there's been a lot of work uh, by the players uh, in readiness uh, for you know, later this month or early next month. I was talking to Mandy Boyd yesterday. Yeah, and, of course, the team just been, uh, well, the squad went to Broad Beach, of course, and uh, had a training camp, played Malaysia and sort of got a good uh, a good feel of the greens at Broad Beach where you're going to be playing both day and night because you have night sessions, aren't you? Yes, we are. Look, you know, the greens are, are really good. Um, probably would like to see them a little quicker. Yes, um, yeah, I've heard but, that comment. Uh, uh, look, they'll be what they'll be. And uh, look, uh, you're going to be hard-pressed to find better greens anywhere in the world. Um, uh, as I mentioned, from our point of view, we'd probably like to see them 15 seconds plus rather than uh, the 14, 15 that we were getting because basically we can play those speeds fine but uh, if they were a little quicker it takes uh, the, the northern hemisphere countries a little bit out of their comfort zone and if that happens that gives us a better chance. Yeah it certainly does because like if we go back to Burnside for example the world champs where we had the greens that couple of seconds quicker really weren't they and we did see the northern hemisphere countries I'm not going to say struggle, that's unfair, but we certainly had their measure. And it, why is, is, is there some reason we're playing around 14 seconds? Is a World Bowl sort of... Is Look, there, I uh, think that 14, 15 seconds is, is probably what World Bowls would like. It, it averages that way. I'm a great believer is that the uh, wherever the event is held, you should just prepare the greens normally. So if you're playing in Burnside, for instance, they're going to be 17, 18 seconds. Correct. Uh, at Broad Beach, depending on what time of the year, but in April, you know, you're going to be around the 15 second mark. Uh, and if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, you're going to be 11, 12 seconds. And, and that's the advantage, obviously, of playing at home. And uh, certainly I know Steve Glasson has, has been trying to, to get the green staff there to get the greens quicker because it also helps Australia as well. It certainly does. Uh, but they'll be lovely greens. Look, they're nice and true. Um, you know, if there is any rain, they'll all get slower. Uh, but, you know, that's part of the challenge that we have in outdoor bowls. So with, with heavy night sessions uh, at Broad Beach, how much difference do you find that made one to the speed of the green and playing on the... It's a wee bit different at night time, isn't it, than during the day? It certainly is, and for us, it's. Uh, I, th I think uh, looking at the draw, and sometimes th these draws do change, uh, our para triples are the only ones that are actually playing at night. Uh, oh, really? They're playing all their matches at night. So uh, as far as the blackjacks are concerned, all these are day matches and... Um, in qualifying. So, um, look, it's something that uh, we've practiced when we've been there, playing in the evening matches. Certainly the, the speed of the green does alter uh, in the afternoon, uh, probably from four o'clock onwards, it starts to, to lose some pace as the heat comes uh, comes out. Uh, so, look, that, we're aware of that, it's just a matter of being, being able to pick that quicker than what the opposition do when the green starts to change. So, Peter, you know, it's, if we talk about the men, you know, I suppose, you know, we all know what year it was the last time we won a medal in the, in the, the men's at the Commonwealth Games. Certainly this Commonwealth Games is, is back in our environment. It's during our season, so it's not like it was in Delhi and Glasgow where we were out of seasons. In our season, the pace of the greens is something that really won't be too much of a problem for us. Um, and we're got a very good side. Look, you know, the men are the current world champions. And um, that does mean something. Uh, we have got quality in, in all the players and we're strong medal contenders in all events. Uh, and in saying that, it's, it, the competition gets better every, every year. Oh, and, no uh, question about that. And while the, the top nations still remain at a very high level, the, the lesser countries are getting a lot better. And uh, so there's no easy beats there now. So you've got to work hard to qualify. It's, yeah, like, again, if we go back to the World Bowls and at Burnside, and you're right, we did see a number of the lesser nations, as we'll call them, of previous years. And certainly, although we might still be beating them, the, the gap's getting a lot, the, the gap's getting closer, isn't it? And they can and they can beat you on the day. Well, that's right. Look, you know, in, in our recent camp, in which we did play Malaysia in, in uh, two days of, of test match conditions, we actually had a, a warm-up afternoon against India, 
who actually took uh, a game off us in both the men and the women. Um, perhaps we weren't really up to the <laughs> uh, at our peak in, in that game, but the Indians had been there for uh, several weeks, and they were staying right through to the game, so they're going to be there for three months, and uh, just watching them play. Very impressed with uh, their technique, so someone's been doing a, some good coaching with them, and um, so uh, it's countries like that where we would still expect to beat them. Uh, but if we do happen to get rolled by them, it would be no surprise. They are going to play enough good games in which they will roll some of the more favoured countries, and you just got to hope it's not you when that's occurring. Do you think, you know, like again, you know, watching Shannon McElroy as an example, you know, we saw him, uh, you know, when he won the world singles, uh, he must go into this event now. Um, with a lot of, he, he's built as a player, hasn't he? He's built in his confidence, he's built in his game management, he's really become of age. He can perform in those crunch games and be successful in them. It's shown that you know, he'll be one of the favourites going into that uh, event. Uh, it's fair to month. say as well with the men's team now, with Shannon playing in the club, of course, as well on the Gold Coast, uh, all, of our, all of our New Zealand men's side is actually Australian-based, isn't it? Which, which, wouldn't that be a plus going into this event as well? Oh, without doubt. Um, you know, of the Blackjack squad of 10, we have seven full-time in Australia, and as you mentioned, Shannon is playing Premier League in Queensland uh, as we speak. Uh, so that certainly is a help, uh, no doubt about that. And, and uh, we... You know, I look upon, you know, years ago there was uh, only a handful, well, less than a handful, one or two players who were playing there on a regular basis. Um, and now that we have 70% of our, our team there now just lifts our standard. The Australians don't play at any higher standard than what we do. But the thing is, it's day in and day out, week yes, in and is. week yes, out. Is, yeah. So you never get away from having to play at that level, where New Zealand-based players will play at that level for for some events, but then they'll drop back uh, because obviously the competition is not here in New Zealand. So certainly advantage, and we've got to be a bit thankful for the Australians. Uh, and with the, with the women's side, you know, we've got the two uh, welcome the young ones, uh, Taylor Bruce and Kate and Inch. Kate, and of course, get beaten in the final, and Taylor Bruce got, got through the semis. Um, they're certainly, you know, they're, they're up there, aren't they, now in the, in the international scene? Well, they are. Look, uh, uh, and it's Caitlin's home club, and, and you know, Paul Girdler is now a member of Broad Beach as well. Um, playing on your home club in a different country uh, is something that's probably uh, we'd never thought would have happened probably ten no, years ago. It certainly um, look, we're been over the moon with Caitlin's development. She was a surprise selection for the 2016 World. Yes, Cup. she was. Yes, she was um, definitely. And Taylor missed there, and there was uh, a lot of disappointment uh, around the Burnside Club that she wasn't in that event. But um, look, uh, they're both, uh, you know, at the start of their international careers, and another 12 months of experience has just lifted them to another level. You know, Caitlin, immediate impact over there, winning, winning the Queensland uh, singles last year. Um, you know, again, it just gives her the confidence that she can play at that level. And uh, again, Broad Beach, one of the strongest clubs uh, in Australia. Uh, you know, playing the club singles is, is, is a yeah, huge is. event uh, <laughs> for the quality of players they have there. So, look, we're we're delighted with the way they they have come on, and and Taylor made her to be debut in a Trans Tasman probably three years ago, and was found to be wanting at that stage. But uh, she's developed nicely, and you know she obviously played really well uh, during section play of that other 25 World Championship, and uh, and so we're and the, on the same greens we're going to use for Commonwealth Games. So and we're I looking for big in, performances. I, I, I believe at the Trans Tasman, which you played at Broad Beach, um, Taylor Taylor Bruce sort of cemented a pretty strong, she played exceptionally well, I believe, didn't she? In the, she did. In Look, the, uh, there were some, some places up for grabs and uh, uh, we have been looking for some players to take those uh, opportunities and we've probably been a little disappointed in the last couple of years where some of the players we thought may have been able to do that uh, just haven't quite been at the mark. But, you know, we've got a really balanced side now. And, and certainly with Mandy coming back into the team, you know, the balance is there. We've been a little bit out of balance uh, uh, with the women's side because, you know, Val Smith, who's not a natural skipper, has had to, had to, to skip at the World Championships. And, um, and she did a pretty good job, let's be fair. But, um, you know, it's not her natural position. And with Mandy back in, you know, you need shot players as your skippers. Well, and it's interesting to say, because talking to Mandy yesterday, 
Yeah, she is a very, uh, you know, and we talk about her aggressive. And I, I'm not saying aggressive in a, in a ridiculous way, but she, she brings, as a top-end player, she brings that aggression into the game. And her maturity since Glasgow in 2014 uh, has been huge, hasn't it? And she's, she's now, along with Joe and Joe Edwards and Val Smith, of course, Really, a seasoned international inside that in that squad, isn't she? She is, yeah. And, it was, and um, uh, look, you know, each position requires d- different skills. And in Mandy's case, her her forcing game is uh, outstanding, and uh, that's what you need from your skippers. You know, your best draw players go first, yep. and, and your shot players come last. And and, uh, and it's not to say that she can't draw well. But uh, you know her strengths are when you're down, she can get you out of trouble. She certainly can. And Joe and Val, of course, bring that. Uh, I don't know how many years now they bring that complete, complete international experience, don't they, to to the side? They do. Uh, and you know we've got a good blend of, of youth and experience uh, there. And you know, again, like the men, we're strong middle contenders in every event. Um, and. Um, well, it's not going to be easy to, to qualify. We'll be disappointed if they don't qualify. And the you know, para and team? The para team, look, um, you know, they, the, two of the three were there when they got silver and almost gold in Glasgow um, um, four years on. Um, uh, look, if they all play as well as they can, then they're going to be, uh, again, a medal contender. Um, Certainly, Australia are very, very strong. Uh, they, uh, South Africa, who won the gold four years ago, obviously very strong. But look, uh, with Mark Noble there, he he can play uh, some outstanding bowls. <laughs> he and, uh, can. <laughs> and you know, if he gets on a roll, then then look out. Uh, but you know, he can only do that if if the front two are doing their job. And you know, for Bruce Wakefield, it's uh, his first uh, major event. Although he played in the Trans Tasman, um, Barry Winks, uh, seasoned performer. Very seasoned, yeah. Uh, look, they've got to do their job. You know, everyone's got to do their job, which allows uh, the shot play and the conversion shots, and, and that that uh, Mark's uh, so well known for, for him to be able to, to play his part as well. So the supporters out there that we can. Uh, we can go away with some confidence that of the hope of a continuation, I'd say, of the World Bowls in, in Christchurch. Yes, we, we would like to think that we can build on that. Um, you know, we've had the cycle of ups and downs, up for World Championships, <laughs> down for Commonwealth Games. Yeah. Uh, look, we've talked about that as a group, um, you know, and, you know, the reasons why we haven't performed. Because, you know, we've had uh, people that have been to a few Commonwealth Games yes. now, uh, and there's no one single thing that, that makes it. Commonwealth Games, I suppose, is different to any of the bowls events we play in because you're just part of a huge New Zealand team there, and there's other things going on around it. And, um, uh, look, we we know those, you know, for the players who have downtimes, because generally for the blackjacks they're playing two sessions a day, uh, of um, so they're either morning and the midday session, or they're um, the, the two afternoon sessions. Uh, you know, so there's a bit of downtime, and so I think you've got to manage that well uh, for the players because it's a long stint. You know, they've got uh, from. Uh, the 5th to the 13th they're playing, uh, so it's a long period and uh, uh, you've got to keep the concentration levels up uh, and you've also got to be able to you know, switch off and I suppose in recent times with Commonwealth Games we're playing two events each in the past it was only one event Correct. Uh, so um, there's plenty of bowls for them there and look, they've trained and practised and uh, to be there for every day that play is going to be on there and uh, we're looking forward to some fine performances. I was there, in fact I did, did a function uh, two weeks ago with Rob Bedell actually and um, uh, he's confident he's going to get some medals, <laughs> he's, got, uh, he's got the bowls team up there as uh, one of the high contenders of, of medals and uh, um, a very good chef to mission and a good guy to have around the side, you know, yes. the, the New Zealand team. Yeah, look, um, we set high standards. Um, you know, we are one of the leading bowls countries. Um, Australia have set a very high standard in recent years. Um, we like to think that we have been able to match them on occasions and go past them on occasions. Uh, we just need to do that on a more regular basis. You know, Australia have so much resources uh, from their clubs in support of their players that they're they're always going to be tough to beat. And, you know, uh, back in my day, we were able to beat them more often than not. 
but there was always this feeling that they would get it right at some stage. <laughs> yeah, no. And under Steve Glasson, uh, they they've had, got it right. They've got, they've got it they've right. Got it. They've got they some have. outstanding yeah. players. They have. And and we um, uh, and this is as we mentioned earlier about you know seven out of ten now based in Australia. Uh, so you know they're playing against them on a regular basis, and uh, and that certainly does help. And, and we're confident that we're going to get some good performances. So on behalf of all of us, and I know I can talk on behalf of all the bowlers around the country and the supporters around the country, that we wish the team all the best and. Uh, and that medals are there, and especially from that men's side where, as I said to Mandy Boyd uh, yesterday, please give them a reminder that uh, we, we'd like some. But I think, and it, it also, the team's in good heart, the management's in good heart, and we just want that support from home and afar, and I'm sure that we can bring home some medals. Thank you, Kevin. Look, uh, the team does appreciate the support it gets from home, and uh, and uh, as we talk to them, uh, you know, they are representing New Zealand, and that's all the bowlers here and those who are associated with bowlers, and so they're, they're aware of that, and uh, I'm sure they're going to give their best.